Hey guys, I'm here with a video showing you how I made the swords for my Blood Moon Katarina cosplay. Continue, I want to note that I'm voicing over the first half of this intro because the audio files were corrupted and this portion was lost no idea what happened no idea why anyways onto the video blood moon katarina is a character from league of legends and the warbler for this build was given to me by cosplay supply slash warbler na i'll have links to their site and a link to the warbler down in the description box below they supplied me with a few sheets of warbler black art to create all of the prop and armor pieces for this cosplay in exchange for a couple video tutorials and some final photos here are the materials you'll need to make the swords a sheet of two millimeter eva foam a sheet of four millimeter eva foam a sheet of warbler primer of your choice i used wood glue paint primer of your choice. I used Rust-Oleum's Sandable and Filler paint primer and Rust-Oleum's White Matte paint primer. Paint of your choice. It doesn't super matter, however, I do recommend that you use an airbrush for the sword's blade. It's really the only way that, at least I know of, to get a really nice gradient. But other paints should work well enough if you don't have access to one. So here are the tools you'll need. A heat gun, painter's tape, a Dremel and medium and fine grit sandpaper, some various cutting tools such as a box cutter and scissors, and a saw or something else that is powerful enough to cut through PVC pipe, paint brushes, adhesives of your choice. For this, I recommend a mix of contact cement, hot glue, and insulation foam board glue. And I think that pretty much covers everything. I'll have a list of all the supplies and materials that I used written down in the description below. I want to also start off the video by noting that I will have templates available on my store Envy and Etsy for all of the Blood Moon Katarina cosplay pieces, and that will be linked down below. And with that, let's get on to the crafting. I start off by drawing up a pattern. I first figured out the size I wanted each section of the sword to be by holding up a large ruler to myself and kind of just guessing or eyeballing the size that looked right. And then I marked those lines onto a sheet of paper. This gave myself a rough guideline when it came to the length. Then, using a reference photo, I started sketching out the general shape. I'm not really sure how to explain this. I've been doing it for so long, it kind of just comes naturally. I just look at a reference photo and draw up what I see. If patterning isn't your thing, then I will have these templates up on my store Envy and Etsy. Both are linked down below. I will say this does take a few tries to get right. I sketch up the shape cut it out, hold it up to myself, and either make some adjustments or start all over. And I'll repeat this until I finally end up with a result that I'm happy with. I'll go over a sketch with a sharpie once I'm mostly happy with it to give myself one solid line to follow when cutting it out. Once you have patterns that you're happy with, trace the blade section onto a one inch thick insulation foam board. I traced out two of these, one for each sword. Cut those out with a box cutter that has a new blade or has just been sharpened. Having a sharp cutting tool will help this process be much easier and will have the results be a lot smoother. My box cutter actually had gotten a bit dual here, so you're going to see some areas where I'm struggling to cut. I actually went and got new blades after this. I also recommend using a box cutter that is a bit bigger than the one that I'm using because the very thin, tiny blade, had it also struggled a bit to cut through this really thick insulation foam board. Although it was useful in getting into that small curve at the back of her blade. In the past, I actually used a serrated kitchen knife to cut insulation foam board. The teeth cut through the foam really easily, but it does create rough edges, meaning you're going to have to sand a lot more later. So use whatever cutting tool you're most comfortable with and be sure to be safe while cutting and cut away from yourself. Now 
Next, I took the patterns that I made for the guard pieces and traced those onto 4mm EVA foam. This EVA foam is from TNT Cosplay Supplies. I cut out a total of four pieces for each piece, mirroring two of those. That means there's one piece that sits normal ways up and one mirrored piece for each sword. That's because the guard is identical on either side, just facing the opposite way because you need a left piece and a right piece. The next step is to cut out all of those pieces. I used a sharp box cutter to do this. Scissors work as well. For the edges along the center top seams or an edge that connects to another piece, I hold my blade at a slight angle to create a slight bevel. Be sure to always hold it at the same angle when cutting out all of the pieces. Like when you do this on other pieces, make sure the angle is always the same. Otherwise, you're going to get angles that don't quite line up with one another in the end. Like they're all going to be facing the same way and you need two pieces to always be mirrored. You can also create this bevel using a Dremel later on. This beveled edge will help the pieces come to a curve at the top when gluing later. Now that everything is pretty much cut out, it's time to start building the swords. First, I needed to shape the blade. To do this, I marked out some guidelines with a sharpie. I eyeballed the center of the foam board about half an inch in and drew a line down what would become the edge of the blade. I also drew a curved line on either side of the blade to mark where I wanted the bevel to end. Then I took my box cutter and started carving away at the blade. You want to do this little by little. You can always take away more, but once it's cut off, you can't really put it back, so be sure to avoid removing too much at once. The goal is to make the bottom of the sword come to a point and create a bevel that gradually goes up to become the full size of the foam board towards the top. You want to make it a blade shape basically. I'm not really sure else how to describe it. I'm sure we've all seen swords before so hopefully you get the idea. It doesn't need to be perfect so don't stress too much about it. The next step will help shape and smooth the blade further. Once I had the rough shape I wanted carved out, it was time to start sanding. I used a medium grit sandpaper that I believe was 100 grit to sand with. As I sanded down the blade's edge, I used my box cutter to carve away more foam as I saw fit. Switching between sanding and cutting really helped me get the shape I wanted. I also sanded around all the other edges to get them as smooth as possible, however my dull blade from earlier did take out a few chunks, so I'm going to have to fix that later. Which I did, you'll see that happen later on. But as for this step, the trick is to work in small sections, removing little bits at a time until you have a nice, smooth, gradual beveled edge. Next, I took a piece of PVC pipe and cut it down to the length I wanted. I had extra PVC pipe left around from previous projects, so that's what I used. But basically, you just want to pick any PVC pipe that's one inch or smaller and feels comfortable to hold. I believe the one I used was exactly one inch. Be sure to cut it out about one to two inches longer than you need. This will be the part of the handle that you stick into the blade. It adds extra support and stability this way. Mark this area on both the PVC pipe and the blade. For the blade, you're going to want to just trace around that excess part of the PVC pipe. Cut out that section in the blade and glue the handle into place using insulation foam board glue. You're going to notice that I won't actually have that in place in the next step and that's because I had actually forgotten to do this first and had to peel off the detail you're about to see me glue on and add the handle in and then re-glue the detail into place. Whoops. The next step was to add some smaller details to the blades, which is the gold section on the blade. I had patterned these out at the start and cut those out into 2mm EVA foam. The foam I used were these pre-glued sheets that I had found at Walmart. Most adhesives will eat through the insulation foam, so these sheets can come in handy. I won't lie though, I have absolutely used contact cement on insulation foam board when I haven't had access to these sheets. I applied a very thin layer of contact cement to only the EVA foam, waited a few minutes, 
for it to dry a little bit, then pressed it into place. It does still eat through the insulation foam a tiny bit, but it's nothing too bad. However, I wouldn't use this for anything that would have weight or tension to it, but for a small detail like this, it was okay. Using a Dremel, I sand off any excess 2mm EVA foam that's hanging past the edge of the blade. Be sure to wear goggles and a mask for this step. After that, trace around the blade onto a sheet of Warbla, adding excess around the edges where the blade is thicker and around the edge where the handle is placed. This is basically the equivalent of seam allowance. I added about half an inch since the part where the blade was thickest was about an inch wide. You'll want to do this four times, mirroring two pieces, since you need two pieces, one normal ways up and one mirrored for each sword. Cut those out using a pair of scissors or a box cutter. I'm using a pair of spring-loaded kitchen shears. Since I get so many questions about these scissors, their kitchen shears. Heat up the warbler using a heat gun until it becomes soft and malleable. Be sure to wear heat safe gloves for this. I know in this clip I'm not. That is because I forgot. So you should do as I say, not as I do. I do, however, put gloves on in a few seconds here. I eventually remembered. Because the warbler gets really hot, so just be sure to be safe. Because this is such a large piece, I worked in sections, but I still tried to work quickly. I heated up one end of the warbler and pressed it around the blade, then heated up that same area on the other piece of warbler, which is for the other half of the blade, and pressed that around the other side of the blade, sandwiching the insulation foam board between the two pieces of warbler. Press the excess around the edges together and against the insulation foam board to close up the seams. Hold up the warbler and heat up another section, making sure the airflow is facing away from the insulation foam board at all times. And then repeat that entire process that I had just talked about until the entire sheet of warbler is pressed together, like both of the sheets are pressed together, and pressed around the insulation foam board blade, sealing it in. You'll want to avoid heating up the warbler while it's on the blade as much as possible. Too much heat will go through the warbler and make the insulation foam begin to melt, creating dents in your sword. This is why I noted earlier to work quickly and make sure the airflow is facing away from the insulation foam board when you're working in sections. You will inevitably have to heat up the warbler while it's on the blade. A tip to kind of help avoid overheating the warbler and melting the insulation foam is to heat the warbler up just enough for it to become flexible again and use quick motions while heating. If you have to go back and heat up an area that you already heated up while it was on the blade, wait for it to fully cool and then go back in and heat it up a bit later just to avoid making that insulation foam underneath getting hotter and hotter like you want that to actually cool off before you heat it again otherwise it's going to start to melt. To press the warbler around the EVA foam details that we glued into place so that that detail still pops I used a clay sculpting tool to do that. Press the warbler around the PVC pipe handle as well. Doing this is going to add some extra security and stability between the handle and the blade. After the two pieces of warbler are pressed together, cut off the excess that is left around the seams. I use scissors for this, but box cutters can work too, and I cut it off while the warbler is still warm. You can absolutely cut it off while it's cool, I just found it easier to do this while the warbler was warm. Next, you're going to want to blend the seams together. To do this, you're going to want to heat up the seams following the tips that I had given earlier. And while wearing heat safe gloves, use your fingers to smooth and press the seams together. A clay sculpting tool would work as well. If you find there's any holes left in the seams where you may have cut away too much, just take a small scrap piece of warbla, heat it up, and press it into the seams, blending it into the rest of the warbla. 
Now let's move over to working on the guard pieces. I started off by gluing together all of the 4mm EVA foam pieces. I only glued those at the center top for now. So by the end of this, you should have two of each section of the guard piece. And by section, I mean there's a bottom half or bottom layer of the guard piece, a layer on top of that piece, and then one tiny little layer at the back of the guard piece. The guard pieces have thinner layers on top of each section, mostly around the edges. Cut those details out in 2mm EVA foam, then glue those into the appropriate places following your template and reference photos. It's basically adding a thin line, about one quarter of an inch or so wide, of 2mm EVA foam around all the edges except for one piece. The excluded piece has a larger section of EVA foam glued on top of it instead. Again, you can see this in both the template and reference photos. I used some leftover pieces of the pre-glued EVA foam sheet for this, as well as contact cement to adhere these pieces. For the contact cement, just follow the instructions on the bottle. Hot glue will also work for this build, however contact cement is much stronger and I personally prefer it. I think it's a lot better and even kind of easier slash less messy to work with than hot glue. Now it's time to sand. I first started off by sanding around all the edges of all the guard pieces that I had just worked on. I used my Dremel to do this and used a medium grit sanding bit. I set a vacuum up nearby and had it running during the entire sanding process to help with the mess a bit. Be sure to have safety goggles and a mask on. Please do not sand without these. Foam dust is not good for your lungs and it's not good for your eyes either. While I had my Dremel out, I went ahead and sanded along the seams on the blade part. Even after cutting off the excess and pressing the seams down, I still had some areas that were a little bumpy. I didn't want to overheat the insulation foam and continue to press and smooth down those warbler sections, so I opted to just use my Dremel to smooth this out instead. I wanted to note that I've also added some EVA foam clay to areas where chunks of the edges were taken out earlier when I was cutting with the dual blade. After this, you'll want to hop back on over to working on the guard piece. You'll want to glue all of the layers together. I glued the small back piece underneath the large upper piece of the guard and then glued that upper piece of the guard on top of the lower guard piece. Follow a reference photo for this. In the end, you should have two whole guard pieces. Next, glue the guard piece into place at the bottom of the blade just above the handle and I used contact cement to do this. At some point around this step you're also going to want to cut out a small strip of 2mm EVA foam that is about half an inch wide and then wrap that around the top of the handle at the base of the blade gluing it into place. You don't really need to measure this out beforehand because you can just cut off the excess once it's glued into place. We're going to continue to work on the handle. I patterned out the wrap that goes along the handle back when I had patterned out all of the other pieces earlier and cut those out in Warbla. I used the leftover scrap pieces of Warbla to cut these out in. You'll add these pieces one by one starting at the end closest to the blade. Heat up the first piece and press one edge into place, wrap it around the handle, and then press the other edge into place, pressing the two edges together and closing up that seam. If there's any overlap with the 2mm EVA foam that we had just wrapped around the very top of the handle, just cut it off using a box cutter. The following pieces will be applied a bit differently. The following pieces will be this weird candy wrapper shape. So at the thinnest points, which are the areas that will end up being the center of the diamonds in the diamond pattern that we're creating, 
twist that. Twist it at the thinnest point. This will create a knot-like appearance. Do this for both sides of each remaining handle piece. After that, place the pieces so that they overlap the piece above it. Try to line up the center of each diamond as you're placing these down. Don't worry if it's not exact, it's probably not going to be. So just try to create as even of a diamond shape as you possibly can. Also take care not to smash down and flatten the twisted part when pressing it onto the handle. Then repeat this process until you reach about one piece in length from the end of the handle. Basically, it doesn't need to reach the very bottom of the handle, just pretty close to it. If you do end up flattening a twisted section at any point, just reheat that area and use a clay sculpting tool to raise it back a bit and push in some grooves in order to mimic a knot-like shape or appearance. Also wear gloves for this entire part. I know I'm not. Don't follow my example on that part. Always wear heat safe gloves. I just didn't think about it for this part. My bad. Next, cut out the detail that goes at the bottom of the handle and cut it out of 2mm EVA foam, then glue that into place. It's going to overlap about two pieces of the warbler pieces that we had just placed down. If there is any excess left over, just take a pair of scissors and snip it off along the top, or I guess technically the bottom of the handle. I use contact cement to glue all of this into place. After this, it's time to work on the pommel. I use 10 millimeter EVA foam bevels to make the U-shaped section. However, looking back, I recommend that you use something closer to 20 millimeters. Take four strips, two for each sword, and glue two and two together. It doesn't really matter which side, it's an equal triangle all around. Then I used a heat gun to help shape the pieces into that U-shape. And to make the ends come to a point, I used a pair of scissors and just cut it at an angle, and then a dremel to kind of smooth that out. Again, I had patterned and cut the pommel pieces out of 2mm EVA foam earlier. So the next step was to start gluing everything together. I first glued this circular layer onto what would be the base of the pommel. There should be four pieces total when completed, and I use contact cement to glue all these together. After that, sand all the edges to make them nice and smooth. Trace around all the pommel pieces onto a sheet of warbla. I use scrap pieces of warbla for this. Add some excess around all of the edges as well, and then cut those out. You should only need one piece of warbler for each piece of EVA foam, but for the pink section of the pommel, you're going to need two pieces of warbler for one piece of EVA foam, so a total of four. Heat up those two pieces and sandwich the EVA foam in between. Then press that piece into the U-shaped bevels. I tried to use just the warbler, however it's too thin for it to actually stick so you're most likely going to need to further secure this with some contact cement and maybe a teeny bit of hot glue. Be sure to cut off the excess warbler before doing that though. Next heat up the warbler for the bottom section of the pommel and press it on top of the EVA foam. You're going to want to fold the edges over for this piece and underneath the foam in order to basically help seal the warbler around the foam and into place. Use a clay sculpting tool to help with this as well as help press the warbler down around the circular top layer on this piece to make sure that that detail doesn't get lost. Create small cuts around the edges to help make folding over the warbler a bit easier, especially around curved areas. Taking the triangular pieces at the end of the pommel, remove a small section from what will be the inside of each piece. Do this by cutting into the foam, but not all the way through, with a box cutter and then bending it in half so you can remove the strips you just separated from the rest with a pair of scissors. Apply contact cement into the groove and once tacky, press it together. This will create a sharp bend on the outside. Take two of those pieces and glue them together around the edges, creating a pyramid-like shape. Be sure that the groove side is facing the inside of the shape. 
Then take two pieces of Warbla, heat them up, and press them around the EVA foam pyramid that we just created, sandwiching the EVA foam shape in between the two pieces of Warbla. Be sure you don't smush the pyramid flat while doing this, and use scissors to cut off any excess Warbla. Next, glue that pyramid piece on top of the U-shaped bevels. Next, glue the base of the pommel onto the bottom of the handle. Do this for both sides and use a heat gun to give this piece a little bit of a curve as well. Take a sheet of 2mm EVA foam and slather it in contact cement. Coat the edges of the base of the pommel in contact cement as well. Then, starting at one end of the pommel piece, press the sheet of EVA foam all the way around the edges, all the way around the pommel pieces to the other side and press it all down into place. Then you can cut off all of the excess EVA foam. This is going to close up that piece. You can also do this with Warbla instead. You can do this in smaller sections as well. Further smooth out these edges by sanding them down with a Dremel. Glue the bottom of the guard together as much as possible. Then to close up the remaining opening area, you'll want to repeat the process that we just did to the pommel pieces to this piece. It's exactly the same. To finish up the pommel, create a slit at the top of the foam at the top of the pommel piece that we just attached to the handle. And then stick the pink section of the pommel piece into that slit, gluing it into place with a mix of contact cement and hot glue. Like fill the inside of this pommel piece with hot glue to help secure it. You can help secure it even further by applying EVA foam clay around that area. And with that, we're finally finished building the sword. On to the final steps. First, you'll need to sand down all of the Warbler pieces. I used medium grit sandpaper for this and sanded until it was as smooth as I could possibly get it and my arms were way too tired to keep going. Don't worry about getting it perfect, the following steps will help smooth it further. Next, you'll need to prime the entire sword with three to five layers of wood glue. Use medium grit sandpaper and sand between each layer after it's completely dried. I did about three layers total. If you find any areas that need more filling to it, I recommend using Bondo's glazing and spot putty. Apply it to any gaps, let it dry, and sand it smooth. Repeat until all the gaps are filled and you're happy with how smooth it is. Do this either between layers of wood glue or after this step, but before the next. After that, I coated the entire sword with a sandable filler spray paint primer from Rust-Oleum. Once it was dried, I sanded the entire thing down with a fine grit sandpaper. The sandpaper I used was 120 grit. I did two layers of this sandable primer sanding after each layer was completely dried. Then I took the swords back outside and coated them with a coat of white matte spray paint primer. Once the sword is primed and ready for painting, you're going to want to pick an area to start painting and mask off the rest. I started with all the gold areas, so I masked off any areas that didn't need to be gold. To tape off curved areas and other weird nooks and crannies and corners, I would just press the painter's tape into place, trace around the edge, peel that off, cut along that line, and then place the tape back into position. I used scrap paper to cover larger areas. Now it's time to start painting. I used gold acrylic paint for this part, but other paints like spray paint or airbrush paint will work just fine too. It took about three layers to get this color fully opaque. Once you're done with the gold, remove the painter's tape, make any touch-ups or fixes if needed, and seal it with a clear coat of spray paint. Then move on to the next color. I painted the purple diamonds on the handles next. Again, I'm using acrylics and it takes two coats to get this color opaque. I mix up a lighter shade of purple and dab that in the center of each purple diamond using a fluffy brush. An airbrush would work great for this part. I do this to add a bit of a glowing look almost, not quite, but kind of 
like it and just give the handle a little bit more dimension. Coat that with a clear coat of spray paint and mask off everything but the blade. It's time to start airbrushing. Katarina's blade has a really nice gradient that goes from blue to pink. To achieve this look, you're going to want to use an airbrush. I started off by adding a light blue shade towards the tip of the blade, leaving the very tip of the blade white. Towards the white area, I'd loosen up on the trigger so that the blue kind of fades into the white. Next, I added a bit of red to the mix to make a light purple color and sprayed that further down on the blade just below the blue. Again, I loosened up on the trigger in order to blend the purple a bit more into the blue. After that, I did the same thing but with a pink color, placing that just below the purple all the way down to the end of the blade. As you're airbrushing on these colors, little by little, you're going to want to slightly mix in more reds or blue to darken up or change the shades so that they better blend into one another. For example, the purple towards the blue area will have more blue and white mixed in it, and the purple towards the pink area will have more red and less white mixed in it. I also brightened up and darkened up the pink ever so slightly towards the very back or bottom of the blade. I did two layers of this gradient. On the second layer, I worked my way up from pink to blue instead of going from blue to pink. Basically, you're just going to want to go back and forth blending the colors up and down the blade until you have a gradient that you're happy with. I also use the airbrush to paint a pink gradient onto the pink area of the pommel. Once happy, peel off the painter's tape and seal everything really well with a clear coat of spray paint. Katarina's blade is black on the top half and that section has an interesting pattern to it. There's a few different ways you could tackle this, like tracing on the design and then painting following along those lines. However, I didn't trust my hands. They're a bit too shaky if I'm honest. So I'm using painter's tape to mask off that pattern instead. What I did was lay down long strips of painter's tape onto a flat surface in an area that's big enough to cover the blade. I recommend using a cutting mat for this because it'll be easy to rotate and it's made for cutting. Lay one strip so that it overlaps the top of the other and work your way up until you have a large enough area of painter's tape. Take the pattern for the blade and trace it out onto the tape. Be sure to leave plenty of room at the bottom of the blade because that's the half that will need to be masked off. You really don't need that much at the top, that's just going to be tossed. Then cut along that line with a box cutter. Feel free to take it slowly. Once that's cut out, remove the top half and toss it aside, you, you don't need it. However, you do need the bottom half. Start peeling the painting's tape off the mat. Start with the first piece you had laid down. This should be the piece that's at the very bottom. Slowly and carefully peel it up and off of the mat. The pieces of tape above this should stay stuck together since they're overlapping the top of one another. However, if they at any point start to peel apart, pause, press them back together, and try again to slowly peel off the tape. Now take that and place it onto the blade. Work slowly. Use other parts of the blade and your pattern to help figure out the placement. Keep it lightly pressed into place until you're happy with the placement and then you can firmly press it into place. Be sure to really apply pressure along the edges because you don't want any of that black paint leaking through. Do this four times mirroring the pattern for two of these. Once you've got the bottom half masked off paint the top half black. I used acrylic paint for this, but if you mask off the entire sword, spray paint and an airbrush would work too. It took three layers to get this color opaque. I also painted the handle wrap black. This is why I preferred acrylic paints for this, because masking off those little diamonds would have taken forever. This way was much quicker. Once dried, go ahead and carefully peel off the painter's tape. You should have some nice clean lines. If there's any areas where the black may have leaked through or the lines got a bit messy, don't panic. Since you sealed the paint underneath, you can just take a damp cloth and use your fingernail to wipe away any mistakes. If sealed properly, it shouldn't affect the paint underneath at all. Once you're happy with the black paint, 
go ahead and give it a coat of clear spray paint. And now we're on the final step, which is shading. I use black oil paint to shade this. Oil paint dries very slowly, we're talking days here, so it's very easy to work with. Usually you can coat an entire piece in oil paint and take a cloth to wipe off the top layer, leaving oil paint in only indented areas. However, for this piece, I found it easiest to just use a paintbrush and paint it all around the edges and any other areas where I felt adding a shadow would make sense or give some extra. I used a thin brush to apply the oil paint and a larger fluffy brush to blend it out. I'd also use a rag to wipe away any excess paint when I might have applied a little too much. Once you're happy with the shading, let it dry for about a day or so and then give the sword one final good coat of clear glossy spray paint. And that should finish up the swords. That's it. They're done. This is how they should look and you should have two of them by the end of this. Hopefully you guys were able to follow along with this video and found it helpful. If you want to see photos of the final cosplay, be sure to check out my Instagram. I will be posting the photos there as well as on my website. Both are linked down below. Thanks so much for watching and thanks so much to Cosplay Supplies for helping me create this cosplay. I hope you guys have a lovely day and bye!